An 18-year-old beauty queen with a rising career suddenly just goes missing one day. And the question still remains, whatever happened to Tammy Lynn Leapert? Hello, true crimeers. This is the case of Tammy Lynn Leapert. Viewer discretion is advised. This case occurred in 1983 when Tammy Lynn Liebert was 18 years old. When Tammy was four years old, she entered her very first beauty pageant. Her mom, Linda, was actually a theatrical and modeling agent. Tammy, as she grew up, was always considered uh, what they would quote as an uncommonly beautiful young girl. And basically from every year since age four, she competed in several beauty pageants. Somewhere in the ballpark, they say, of about 300 different pageants. And she actually took the crown in somewhere around 280 of them. By the age of 16, Tammy Lynn is living in Rockledge, Florida with her mom. I think she has at least one sibling. I know she has a sister, but I don't know if she has any other siblings outside of that. But with her mom being a talent agent, essentially, her mom worked with a lot of younger kids including uh, one particular 11-year-old. His name was Wing Flanagan. And I don't know the circumstances behind it, but Wing Flanagan would end up moving into the home with Tammy and her mom. Uh, Tammy's parents had divorced since she was a, a much earlier age. And I don't know exactly in this scenario where her sibling or siblings were. Everyone would describe Tammy as an incredibly gifted young woman. She was vibrant. She had a very bright smile. And if there was anyone uh, made for the modeling industry, it was Tammy. Her success as a beauty pageant queen would end up blinding her uh, small roles in movies like Scarface. She also was in a movie called uh, Spring Break a movie that earned about $25 million at the box office. Tammy was well on her way to having a very successful career. I mean, there was just no doubt that she was going to do a lot of really good things and probably make a lot of good money. And most importantly, Tammy loved it. This wasn't something she really ever felt forced into doing. This was just something that came natural to her and she just excelled at it. And even in the occasional time where she was maybe rejected or lost a pageant, she always took it in stride. She was always respectful to her competitors. Tammy was also not a very combative person. She never really spoke out of turn. You know, if there was ever like some kind of confrontation, Tammy usually would try to just sort of avoid the confrontation and kind of back away from it, change the subject, because ultimately she just wanted everyone to be happy um, because she was happy. But then in July of 1982, something seemed to just change in Tammy. So that's uh, when the movie Spring Break came out and, you know, it had success. And when the part, when the movie was released, she would end up doing like cast parties and that kind of thing. And she ended up doing, going to an out of town party that was like a couple of days long. And she came back, according to Wing and her mom, Linda, she came back a changed person. She wasn't the same Tammy. She seemed to be uh, becoming more and more unhappy. She also appeared to be a little like nervous all the time she seemed to be something was always seemed to be bothering her and whenever someone tried to ask her what's wrong she would either just like i said before like evade the evade the whole thing uh change the subject or she would sometimes be a little she would actually end up yelling at someone for asking what was bothering her she became uh, more paranoid to a degree one day wing said that at the house the phone rang and Wing was about to answer it when Tammy came up to him and said, do not tell, let them know that I'm here. If it's for me, do not tell them that I'm here. She seems scared almost. So he answered the phone and sure enough, it was a guy asking for Tammy. And then Wing said, no, she's not here. But Tammy wouldn't elaborate to him or her mom as to what was going on. Eventually, she actually would say some stuff to Wing. And when he asked her like, why have you been so paranoid lately? And she said that, she told him that she saw something awful, something that was just so bad that she was clearly not supposed to see. And I believe this was probably at that party she had attended, but she would not elaborate on what that thing was. She didn't say what it was at all. 
She gave no hint as to what it could be, just that she saw something awful. Then one day, her mom Linda would talk to her, and Tammy said, uh, kind of out of, just sort of out of thin air, Mom, what if I told you somebody was trying to kill me? What if someone is spying on me? But again, she would not elaborate as to who that may be that she's scared of that might try to kill her. She said very like a, another vague statement that was like, if I say anything, they might come after me. But who they is, again, it's not known. One day, Tammy would call Wing over to a window of their house and she kind of like looked out of it, sort of like peeking through the curtains. And she told Wing, like, look at that van over there. And he told her, well, actually, that's the neighbor's van. They just got a new van. It's theirs. And then she responded to him when he said that with the word, exactly. And he, like, he didn't know what that meant. She then claimed to him that the van had mirrored windows, that they can see us, but we can't see them. And she, at that point, said they're spying on her. Tammy began to isolate herself. She just became more and more... Um, recluse. But through this, she's still getting gigs, and she was offered a small part in the movie Scarface with Al Pacino. And she began filming it in Miami in 1983. She had stayed with a friend named Walter, and at first everything on the, on the set was going fine until about the fourth day when Walter Leibowitz got a phone call. He was asked to come to the set immediately because Tammy was reacting very big to something. There was, they were shooting a scene that involved somebody getting shot in blood spurting out of that person. And when Tammy saw it, she had a very loud and big reaction. She became hysterical. She was screaming and crying over it. And she at one point said something that no one really understood why she said this, but she screamed something about money laundering during that that scene. And so when Walter got to the set, he had to like calm her down and he then calls her mom, Linda. Linda says, can you please take her to the doctor? And he said, you know, I can do that, but you know, I, I can bring her back to you and you might need to take her to the police. They did eventually get Tammy to communicate with the local sheriff there when she got back home. And she sort of told the sheriff some like, kind of the, like these paranoid thoughts she was going, having, having at the time. But he, I guess she never mentioned to them about her life being threatened or her life in, being in danger. But then back at home, she would be, continue the paranoid thoughts of somebody's watching me, somebody's spying on me, I'm afraid. She wouldn't drink anything that anyone gave her, like an open bottle. She wouldn't eat any food that someone prepared for her because she was paranoid someone was going to poison her. Before she ate anything, she would actually ask Wing, like, hey, you can you take a bite out of this first so that I know it's not poisoned? Like, oh, that's nice. But, um, but you know, it was just sort of like that thought that she was, that behavior she was having, it just got worse and worse. On July 1st, 1983, um, Tammy, her behavior became violent. She and Wing were sitting in the living room. Wing was just sitting there reading a book when all of a sudden Tammy accused him of looking at her in a very you know, kind of creepy way. And he was like, what? I'm reading my book. What are you talking about? And this caused her to get mad. And so she storms out of the house. After a few minutes, she tries to get back in, but the door's locked. And she's like banging on the door, let me in, let me in. But no one responds fast enough. And so she sees there's a baseball bat outside the house. She takes the bat and she smashes the front window of the home. And that's when Wing runs out of the house and tries to grab the bat from her and say, stop it. You know, what are you doing? And she she comes at him with the bat. Like she begins to swing it at him and she's very vocal and screaming at him. And, you know, he at that point is like, I, is she going to hit me with this? And then she started sw like swatting at him with her hands and she was like slapping him. Linda was able to come into the house or the living room at that point, And she was like, Tammy, it's me. It's your mom. You need to calm down. I love you. What is going on? And finally, she was able to kind of bring Tammy back down. And at that point, her mom had to check her into a local a mental health center there. And, she, you know, she needed Tammy to have a thorough examination. She needed her mental health to be evaluated because something was obviously very wrong. And even, I guess, at the mental health facility, she was telling people that he is going to kill me. He still wants to kill me. But she wouldn't elaborate again who, why, where this is coming from, nothing. On July 5th, 1983, she is she checks out of the hospital and one of her very good friends, Rick Adams, picks her up. He actually ends up taking her to a church that they both went to all the time. And I guess at one point she was in the church praying and just 
crying uncontrollably. And then afterwards, you know, he dropped her back off at her home. And then he said, all right, well, let's do this again, you know, tomorrow, the next day. And they made plans to go back to church. Um, but also at the same time, she told him, Rick, I love you, but I might need to be going away for some time. So I just wanted you to know that I loved you. But when he asked her, like, where are you going? And she, she didn't say. Then on July 6, 1983, Tammy all of a sudden seemed to be, according to Linda, extraordinarily normal that day. Almost as if Tammy was trying to conceal the paranoid delusions and all of that. At 11 o'clock in the morning, um, Tammy runs out of the house because a friend of hers, Keith Roberts, uh, he drove in front of the house. And Linda saw Tammy go towards Keith Roberts' vehicle and she gets into the car and they drive off. Uh, it all happened just so suddenly. And then Linda said that at that point she felt something she felt fear. She felt something was really bad. Um, and her intuition was correct because that was the last time she ever saw Tammy ever again. Later on, uh, according to Keith, the guy whose car it was, who picked her up, the plan was for them to go to the beach. But he said that Tammy got into or she became, she was screaming at him and, and they were arguing in the car. And she just said, let me out here, let me out here, when they drove past this bank. And at that point, she said, fine, get out. And so she got out of his car and she had on no shoes. She had, she did not have her purse or any of her belongings. She was just in her regular clothes, but no shoes or socks on. And he took off. This was near the Cocoa Beach area in Florida. That's where she was last seen. That was on, at about 3 p.m. on July 6, 1983. And this again, this is all according to this friend. Now, later on, Tammy's aunt would get, um, she would check her answering machine at this business she owned. And Tammy had left her three messages there. Her aunt wasn't there when Tammy called. And the messages seemed to be very erratic, very just... Again, that paranoid kind of delusion. And then they would also find out later that Tammy tried calling another friend, but the friend wasn't home. And then that was it. That was the last time anyone ever heard her voice, even like on an answering machine. Nobody has seen Tammy ever since. Nobody has heard from her ever since. And so Linda would report Tammy missing and police kind of began investigating this right away. They interviewed a lot of Tammy's friends and close acquaintances. And some of them would tell them that, you know, Linda and Tammy, they sometimes argued over Tammy's career. And that one friend said that Tammy one time said, hey, when I'm 18, I'm getting out of here. I'm done. And, and, and Tammy was 18 when all this happened. Linda would tell police, yeah, we got into arguments, you know, all the time with regards to her career. But it was never anything like without I was concerned about her just, you know, leaving all of a sudden. She doesn't believe Tammy left voluntarily. She believes something happened to Tammy. As a matter of fact, Tammy had plans to go to California for three months um, within a short time after all of this occurred. And so, like, Linda was like, she had plans to even to be out of the house for three months. It doesn't make sense that she would leave before that. And Tammy was really excited about doing it. However, Tammy never got to California. I mean, her destination that she was supposed to be going to, which would have been a couple of weeks later, she never showed up. No one there ever saw her. No one talked to her. Police claimed that over the course of their investigation, which is like, you know, years worth, they got two different phone calls stating that Tammy was alive and well and she was uh, going to school to become a nurse, which made no sense to Linda or any Tammy of any of Tammy's friends or wing because Tammy was like deathly terrified of blood. She couldn't stand the sight of it. So wing and Linda, it sounds like what they believe is that Tammy did see something when she went out of town for that, that casting party thing and she came back a completely different person, they believe that she saw something that she wasn't supposed to see and that maybe she felt threatened by someone because they knew she saw that thing. Because her behavior went from being just this calm, happy-go-lucky, vibrant young woman to instantaneously a completely paranoid person, terrified of something happening to her, like being killed. I don't see any records of like her having any kind of drug history, any alcohol abuse, anything like that. They did also find out that, that when she had that breakdown on the set of Scarface and she screamed something about money laundering, police were like, okay, I mean, you know, that kind of makes sense with the career she's in. She sees a lot of big names. She's on a lot of movie sets, you know, in modeling agencies and 
Sure, that could be a thing she maybe overheard someone talking about. The police always seem to be kind of in the in the ballpark of, we think she ran away, she left voluntarily, and she'll come back one day, or someone will, will spot her. But her family and her friends think that she met with foul play. You know, she had that, who is that Rick person, right? She got into that car with and apparently dropped her off just in her bare feet with no purse or anything. I, I'm assuming they questioned him, but I'm not 100% positive. But he was the last person, apparently, who saw her. Did something happen in that argument they had where he did something to her? Well, there has been, I guess, no evidence to suggest that. There's been no physical evidence of foul play. They don't have a crime scene or anything like that. So just because there's not evidence of foul play doesn't mean there wasn't foul play. At one point, a man named Christopher Wilder was considered a suspect in this case. He was nicknamed the Beauty Queen Killer. He was a serial killer. And, but eventually they ruled him out of being involved in this. They also had another suspect, a man named John Crutchley, who was also known as the Vampire Rapist. He was considered a suspect because he would have been in the area at that time, but they never had any evidence to suggest that he did anything to her. And that's basically it. Nobody knows what happened to Tammy. Nobody knows where she is. Nobody knows where she went. Nobody knows if she left willingly. Nobody knows if she met with foul play. Nobody knows a thing. She's just gone. The thing that always gets me about cases like this is that, sure, maybe at that time, if she left willingly or voluntarily on her own, maybe she could keep herself hidden. But now, after all of this time, you would think that over the course of these few decades, and also her story being featured on uh, shows like Unsolved Mysteries and other true crime type things, you think at this point someone would come forward to state... I have seen her, I saw her, I was with her. You would think now that with all this time gone by that maybe she would come forward and say, listen, I went through a rough patch and I went, I went away on my own. You would think that she would at this point come forward or that somebody would have seen her, somebody, one single person, but nobody, nobody has really ever said that they have seen her. And so Tammy was just there one day and then she was gone forever. Sadly, Linda, her mom, passed away in a, sometime around 1995 or so, and she was 54 years old, and she never got to find out what happened to her daughter. They never found her, and she never, she never got closure. She never got the answer. I know that her sister has uh, recently tried to keep Tammy's story alive. There were rumors that... Tammy may have been killed by an ex-boyfriend, uh, but those rumors have never been substantiated. And there's, you know, there's other rumors, there's other uh, bits of information they've gotten over the years, but they've never really been able to corroborate anything. And it's kind of like because they treated this as just sort of a runaway and police weren't thoroughly investigating this as a foul play kind of case, they may have missed opportunities for... In, uh, interviewing the correct people or digging deeper into certain people, looking more into her past, looking into just looking more into it and looking for crime scenes or anything. Did they go to where she was dropped off off near that bank? Did they question people over there? Did anyone see her? I don't know. And that's kind of that's how this ends with I don't know. Nobody knows. Well, someone somewhere out there has got to know the truth, really. At least one person has to know. And perhaps that someone is you. If you have any information about the mysterious disappearance of Tammy Leapert, you can actually reach out to her sister. Her sister runs a Facebook page. If you just search Facebook, I'll put it in the sources in the description below as well. But that way you can you can reach out to her with a tip. You can probably DM her or leave a comment on one of the posts and anything like that. You can also try reaching out to the police there, which their number is 321-868-3251. And perhaps you could help this family get the answers they're looking for. And if Tammy, if something happened to her and she needs justice, please help Tammy get the justice she rightfully deserves.
But that is it for this case, True Crime, Aruni, Dooney, Dingleberry, Dongs. I hope you found it interesting. As usual, uh, please subscribe if you're new here. Give the video a like so more people can see it. You never know, the right person might see it and have information. Uh, you can also follow me over on TikTok where I tell short form true crime stories. The link to my TikTok page is in the description in the link tree below. Also down below, you'll see my email address. If there's a case you want me to cover, just send me a really quick email with the name of the individual, where it happened, when it happened. I'll add it to the list. The list is over 6,300 names long. I pick my cases I cover each time at random, so I can't promise you when I'll cover that case, but I will get to it eventually. But that is it for this video, True Crime Aruni. So until the next case, ta-ta for now, True Crime Aruni.